record this now just so we have something. So uh, I'm not sure how far it will go, but let's see. Again, working remotely from my truck. I have to regurgitate the uh, podcast I used to do. That used to come from the uh, used to come from the bunker when we were all locked down for COVID. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That was actually I actually had some really great people on that um, from around the state. A couple of I uh, had a couple of executive directors. I had Robert Zayas. I had um, Pizzarelli came on. Uh, Combs. Kathy Hoyt. I had uh, a couple of co good coaches, kids. It was fun. So I may be bringing that back again. So look for the possibility of a new AD being a guest on a podcast soon. <clears throat> I just have to have your walk-up music right. I always put different walk-up music for each person. So we'll see. All right, it's five after. We might as well get started. I know you guys are going to have busy days. Um, like I said to you, uh, a couple of you guys earlier, I'm working from the car today. The internet's down at the school, so don't mind the look. I really don't like the look in the car, but it is what it is. Um, and I want to keep open mics because I really can't see anybody off the phone here. <clears throat> if you want to talk or comment, please just open up your mic and, and talk away. Um, wanted to just discuss a little bit about unified sports. Does anybody have currently a unified sports program in their in their uh, queue? Call place, we do. Uh, yes, Pleasant Hill School District. Oh, I'm sorry. Pleasantville School District runs a uh, pioneer sports program. We don't. We're not affiliated with the unified sports um but there's been a uh, question as far as whether or not we can take it a step further and, and join that group at call place we offer basketball we're entertaining bowling for next year Here at Lackawanna, we have uh, unified bowling, but not basketball just yet. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, yes. Okay, good. I'm sorry, I got, I actually got knocked off for a second. So. I did hear a couple of people do have unified uh, programs. Can you elaborate a little bit on it? I think I heard Ty at the end there talking about it. Ty, can you elaborate a little more on your program and what you're doing? Yes. Um, yes. We have at Call Place, we have unified basketball. Um, we also do a, uh, a challenger, which is it's not unified. Right. Um, it's kind of a lead up, but we also, um, we offer unified basketball and we're entertaining unified bowling for next year. Oh, good. Good. I, the one thing, the, the one thing with the challenger program, I thought that was pretty good. That's run by the fellow down in Massapequa, right? We, we, we work hand in hand with uh, what's his name um, from Clark, uh, the AD at Clark. Okay, uh, okay. Because Ed Hoffman was the one who started that challenger thing, and when I was at Whitman, we got involved in it years ago. I mean, I think it was seven years ago we got involved in it. We found it to be very beneficial because it didn't have the rules, the same type of setup. For those of you that don't have unified or see the unified program, it may not be in the image that the state is looking for. And that's what we kind of worry about with unified that it tends to look a little more like the challenger program. Uh, Todd Nelson and Nate Johnson, if you haven't met them already, um, they're the ones that are really the driving force behind pushing this statewide. Uh, 
Section five is is got a great program. We kind of fed off of that a little bit. And when Section eight started theirs uh, down here on Long Island, I jumped in with them, but they could never get it to grow. I think it's grown a lot more over the last couple of years. I think they had eight teams and I think they may be up to 14 or 15. We actually in Suffolk got it up to 32 teams. Um, at one point, I think it dropped down a little bit, but now it's going to pick up. But the one thing about Unified that you have to remember is that it's really <clears throat> meant to look and feel like a regular game, as best as it could possibly be. The maybe fortunate or unfortunate thing about it is that they chose basketball to get started with, which is one of the more highly competitive sports. But you look for functionality. So the student athletes with special needs – that require a para that need assistance, basically doing almost everything. Um, they're not really the target market for unified, which is troublesome to a lot of people. And it's one thing that we tried to get over. Um, we made concessions in the beginning. Um, but at the same time, you still wanted these kids to have access because again, once you start something like this and you know, the special needs population, um, the parents are desperate for activities for kids, for their kids to do. Um, it did benefit us in a way where we engaged kids from outside that normally wouldn't be engaged with kids with special needs, um, kids that were non-varsity athletes for that particular season and us was the spring season. It did help us at least engage those kids in, and not just on a community service level, but on a professional level where they really got to see and feel what it was like to work with special needs children. Um, and then you have the autistic group that's in there that, that are functional, that are somewhat savants at what they do. Um, you have, uh, we had one, we had one young man, he had a, uh, a physical disability and he also had uh, a mild case of autism, but he was listed in the special needs group and he could shoot threes like there was no tomorrow. Northport had a kid who was blind, basically, and could shoot foul shots. It, you know, so little things like this, you try to make that particular accommodation to get them in the game, but that wasn't the intent. And you'll hear that when you hear people talk about it. Has anybody encountered anything like that in their programs or in the building of their programs? where it's different from like a regular basketball game where it doesn't look like it because there's extra people on the floor or anything else. Has anybody got that? So I can just speak for unified bowling. We have, um, we have eight unified bowlers this year with special needs and 12 wow. to 16 kids that are regular ed students who are their partner bowlers. Okay. And um, it, I, you know, we are tied in, our unified bowling is tied in with our ECIC league out here in section six it's the okay. first year that they've tied it in with ECIC and it really mirrors a regular ed bowling program. I can't say enough about it. You know, I mean, it's, you know, our kids have an opportunity for seven matches, plus they have kind of like a culminating activity, kind of like a roll off, um, you know, at the end. So they have eight opportunities to, to either travel or play at home. And, you know, they, they have uniforms um, that match, you know, matching uniforms for our regular and special ed kids. Uh, nice. They're constantly posting, sending me pictures. I'm posting them uh, today to our, you know, they just won their first match. So I'm posting them to our website this morning. Um, Very good. They are absolutely loving it. They just absolutely love it. And so do our, so do our regular ed kids. They look forward to it. And bowling to me is really the entry place for unified. If you really want to see how a program works, especially with the partner thing, uh, it's different in basketball. It's, it's three special needs and two gen ed, but they're not working really one-on-one -on -one with that player. They're just putting them on a team. They're passing them the ball and, and whatever, but bowling seems to be the great entry point. If you haven't started a unified program. Now the problem with bowling is going to be the expense uh, special education in New York. I'm sorry, special Olympics of New York uh, through Nate Johnson. They'll give you some seed money to get started. They'll give you two thousand dollars in the first year. They'll give you a thousand in year two. If you haven't applied for it, please do because it's there for you. They have a grant for that, um, and that helps offset the cost of uniforms and things like that. Bowling is expensive. We're 
we're not going to say that it's it's cheap in any way, shape, or form. You have to pay for the lanes. Um, you have to pay for transportation on a consistent basis to get people to the lanes. So make sure you take that into consideration. Also, payment for coaches. It depends on what your board of education wants. Do they want a regular coach? Does the union want a regular coach hired for that? Or can you get away with a certified coach and pay them supervisor pay? You know, there's been creativity in that as well. But the general need here is to get those kids out there to do things. Um, <clears throat> the fact that bowling and basketball are the two major ones right now, consider bocce if you haven't already. Bocce seems to be gaining some ground uh, in a lot of areas, and you'd be shocked. When I mentioned it when I was at the National this year, the guy I was presenting with uh, on technology, we started talking about Unified. He's in Kansas. And they have bocce out there. So don't think it's just limited to Manhattan where you go play bocce up in one of the parks up there or in Brooklyn or a place like that. <clears throat> it's really national, uh, a national sport, and especially for children with special needs, because it's really it's non-contact. It's exactly like bowling as far as the setup goes. They would be a partner with that athlete. Um, and then you do it the same way, but you know, where do you do it on a, where do you play bocce? You can play bocce anywhere. If you have a turf field, that's the perfect place to play. If you don't have access to a bocce court, which if you've seen them, you know what they are. You they're expensive, have to be maintained. They have to be watered down as a special type of clay. You don't want to get into that, but if you have a turf field, certainly you can do that. The other one that I tried to get started through our phys ed program because we do a, a fitness competition in the elementary level uh, with schools from all over Suffolk County. I wanted to try to get that for the high school level with special needs students, um, you know, sit-ups, not jumping rope necessarily, but maybe hopping, uh, lifting, you know, flipping a tire, little, you know, small tire, things like that, that they do in the regular fitness uh, games. And maybe that would work. I even thought about it as a possible sport, but, you know, they're, they're hooked on esports right now for some reason. But has anybody thought about bocce or tried bocce? Yes, no, maybe. I can't see guys shaking their head because I'm on the phone. Hello? Yeah, no bocce. No bocce. Okay, good, good. Somebody, yeah, somebody monitor the head shaking for me. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, but let's consider that. Um, remember, though, when you go to start this up, you want to deal with certain people. It's, it's not just going out to the special ed teacher and saying, hey, how many kids do you have? You really want to assess it through your physical education department and those that are in the adaptive PE program. You also can glean kids out that are in regular physical education that have an IEP or a 504 that may not be an adaptive PE. But certainly, if you want to get those kids engaged, the next one to really talk to is the supervisor of special ed or the director of special ed. You want to talk to your local SEPTA um, or your special needs group, the parent group, make your presentation and ensure that you have their backing to get in. Now, Ty, you walked into the situation at Carl Place, and I'm only going to use you because, you know, you, I know you're brand new there. Tell me about the uh, your dealings with it since you took over and what, what was there and what you're dealing with now. Okay, so I guess when I stepped in, I stepped in late, late August or you know, mid-August. Um, there was uh, a number of coach vacancies that needed to be filled before, I guess, August 23rd when we started, uh, football coaches. Um so we had to <laughs> we had to hire a uh, slew of coaches before the beginning of that season because um, we were stripped. I mean, we we needed to hire for our coaches at that time. We had no nurse at the time, so I guess our department was playing nurse. So as far as the physicals and everything was concerned, we we needed to um, kind of go through all of our student athletes physical records and things of that nature and making sure that they um, met the standards of playing. Um, 
So this was this was for the regular students, the regular sports. You had to deal with this initially. So how did that how did that affect your unified program? Oh, as far as unified, oh, it, yeah. It, as far as unified, it didn't it didn't affect the unified. Um, our unified is we the way we do it here is we have a person a, a coach who's paid by <clears throat> by a stipend, not a stipend, but um, more so chaperone a supervision, right, bank. right, um. And you know they they really don't even practice they because because the games the way that that is set up they they uh, when we start in March I believe um, right. they they come in and they play the games you know and and they're paid. Yeah, you haven't yeah you haven't experienced it yet but you you can see what's coming and and mm-hmm. you brought up a, you brought up a point which I think needs to be addressed you really don't want to just make this a game thing. You want to practice. You mm-hmm. want to get the kids out there to practice. They have to learn and know the rules of the game. That's the expectation of unified basketball. See, what we get caught up in with unified is we feel that we just have to get the kids out there mm-hmm. and run around. It looks like a scene from Braveheart. And, you know, everybody's it's like, a you know, like a, a young physical, uh, physical education class where kids are finding their own space and running around the room. You know, they carry the ball. Uh, they, they, they don't know what traveling is. They don't know what a double dribble is. They don't know what a foul is. Your your job as the coordinator of the unified sport in your building, <clears throat> you have to teach them the rules. And I know like Amy with unified bowling, you're not letting kids go over the line if they go over the line i would assume it would be a foul or at least teach them that they can't go over the line and then look for that retention and repetition as they do it now i don't know the level of special needs you have you could have some severely handicapped children bowling which is fine it's not the same thing as basketball but getting to the rules of the game is very critical so ty just some advice you want to have some practices Okay. You definitely want to have some practices because is there anybody else that can agree with me on that? Anybody else that has unified basketball? We have it in our district. I just haven't experienced it yet, being that right. this is my first year, but I agree with you. Yeah, there's no there's no question about it. Now the referees are have been very lenient as far as this goes but at some point they're being told you know let's let's call traveling let's call double dribble make sure the out of bounds are correct you know so you still want to teach and i know you put a coach out there but the coach has to be certified they have to have first aid cpr ad if it's a uh, outside person, they've got to go through the coaching classes. You want to make sure you're covering yourself from any other kind of liability because you're putting kids into an activity. And if you have a non-certified person out there, the liability falls on you. So ensure that that's taking place. Also, every one of those children need physicals, and that's the biggest road uh, speed bump that we have to deal with. They're playing a sport. They need to have an active athletic physical. Now, they should pass with flying colors. If they have some kind of thing with an EpiPen or or an allergy or anything else, it's no different than we have with our regular athletes. Um, If they have a seizure disorder and require medication, that might be something else. And maybe that's not suited for them. So what Unified has done is they've built into the halftime or the post game time for you to do something related to those children. So whether it's a shooting contest or dribbling contest, uh, whatever it may be, you can engage those children in those activities at halftime or after the game. And we found that to be very uh, beneficial to the students as well. So you're walking into something, if you have a program that you don't know what it looks like, my advice to you is treat it just like any other sport you have, treat it maybe like a modified sport where it's a learning piece because you're going to get athletes to come and help you that aren't basketball players. I found that wrestlers and football players want to get involved. Wonderful, wonderful. But make sure they know and understand the rules of basketball as well. 
Most of them will. But again, playing the game in that kind of situation is a lot different than playing pickup ball in phys ed class or out on the street. So keep your eyes on those things as you start to either engage in conversations about building a program or supervising, supervising the program as it goes. So um, I didn't have much else today. Does anybody want to comment on what we're talking about right now? And again, the guys that just walked in, I'm on and I'm in my truck. I can't see anybody. I'm only on one screen. We have no internet at the school. So would anybody like to comment on that? What we're talking about with unified sports? I, I have something to add about our uh, unified bowling. You know, this Great. is my this is my first time uh, with a unified program, just being the new athletic director here in Lackawanna. So, I mean, it was I've seen unified basketball in my home district um, where my own kids attended, but I've never really paid attention to all the details until this year. But something that we did with our um, coaches is we actually appointed a, um, a certified coach, but also a special ed teacher, their special ed teacher that is their, you know, is their um, self-contained teacher. And it seems to be working very well because our coach is there for the coaching piece and their, their special ed teacher is really there um, just because she knows the kids so well. And, um, you know, our kids stay after school. And even when we have a home bowling match, they are still bused to the alleys and then they are bused home to their doorstep like they normally would be on their, right, on their other uh, special need buses. Um, okay. And we have uh, we have one student who's all, who's autistic, but uh, or Down syndrome, and uh, Down syndrome as well as diabetic. So we had to include a nurse, um, you know, sure. be, because obviously his EP calls for it, and you know a couple of aides that also attend. So there's a lot to it, but um, I, I can't even you know I, we're looking forward to adding basketball in the future, just because it's such a a huge highlight for our kids, you know? So, and the, uh, the, uh, that's great. I mean, I, it's, and the, that the setup you have is really the perfect setup. Um, making sure the certified coach is there that maybe knows the sport or phys ed teacher that perhaps can coach any sport technically, um, but engaging the special ed teacher and obviously paying them too. We're not worried about that. There could be a power professional assigned to the kids. You might have to pay the seizure disorder we had. We had to require a nurse too. So yeah, I can, I can understand where that would go. We, we thought the initial expense would be about $7,000 to run a unified basketball program. Came out to about 8,500 because when you have your games, you have the scores and the timers and security and everybody else that had to be paid as well. So that's an expense there. But one thing is, Amy, do you plan on including those athletes in your regular sports awards for the winter? We actually have our, just already planned um, a senior night. Um, because all of, on our senior nights, we award kids with flowers and we say something about them. So it's uh, next Thursday, actually. Um, That's awesome. So I try to, yeah, I try to include them as, you know, as much as we possibly can. And we don't have seasonal banquets. We have uh, the season spring banquet that we're trying to bring back for the first time. Um, okay. So, you know, they definitely will be included in that. Uh, as well as we, our, we, right. Once we did this, once we did that and included them in the awards. Oh, you had to see it. You had to see it. And those kids also ended up qualifying for scholarships because they played a varsity sport. We, we treated them as a varsity sport even before the state acknowledged it as a varsity sport. And we put them into our scholarship program, um, some of those that were going to college. And three or four of them eventually won scholarships from the PTA and from the Booster Club. So just engaging those kids, because who's going to say who's going to say no to them? Really. And we're not we're not doing anything more than just giving another opportunity, an athletic opportunity for for a student athlete. So it's um, it's really refreshing and it's really good for the soul. I mean, I I go back to my days where when I was a lot younger and I had an aversion to children with special needs. I, I had a tough time dealing with kids in wheelchairs, uh, kids who were mentally retarded back in the day when they used to have that lockup room back in the 60s for them. It was, it was tough for me. And then once I got this job and started to see what we actually do with children with special needs to become educated on what they can do and can't do, um, it was eye-opening. Uh, I also would recommend that 
you guys engage yourselves in the Special Olympics, uh, the track and field or the weightlifting or whatever they do, do that yourself. Take a few kids to these events, sign them up. I did it for eight years, uh, taking the kids on. We even hosted Special Olympics track and field in our school. It's amazing. It's amazing. And uh, Tim Flynn was our coordinator back then. He's now in the state. But for Unified, you can reach out to Todd Nelson at NISVA. You can reach out to Nate Johnson, who's the Unified Special Olympics coordinator, and they can help you along from there. Uh, does anybody else have any comments on this? Does anybody have any comments in general about what's going on? Hearing nothing from the group. Uh, I just want to thank you for coming on today. I know I was going to make it short uh, because it's really just a, a piece that some of you have already. I just haven't experienced it yet. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. And I wish you guys all the best. Um, we're going to take a break on this for uh, a couple of weeks. Um, recycle it. If you haven't signed up for the conference, please do. I know you're being inundated with things from me on social media about it, and emails and everything else. Um, it's going to be a great conference. I'm really looking forward to it. I was talking to uh, Anthony Fisher from uh, Minnesota, who's flying in for his presentation. And just to get him in here from Nomad, it's, it's a great thing for us to get somebody who has national experience and recognition. He's also a delegate to the NIAAA now. So we don't get people like that often coming in for free uh, to do presentations, like a one-hour workshop. So you definitely should make yourself available that week to be there. And also the LTI classes. Uh, 504 is going to be running on February 15th. That's the first law class if you haven't taken it uh, for CAA certification. It's a mandatory course. So I would advise those interested, go on to your AMP account as members and sign up under events for that as well as the conference and any LTIs you may want to take at the conference. So for those that have, great. But those not, let's get going, man. All right. I appreciate you all. You guys have a great day. Great week. Thank and I'll you send so you much. Things. You're welcome. Thank you. Have right. a good one. Be well, guys. All right. Well, uh, take care. Take care, crew. See you, Ty.